The Theory of Political Economy by William Stanley Jevons Chapter 4 Theory of Exchange Part 9 The Theory of Exchange The keystone of the whole theory of exchange and of the principal problems of economics lies in this proposition. The ratio of exchange of any two commodities will be the reciprocal of the ratio of the final degrees of utility for the quantities of commodity available for consumption after the exchange is completed. When the reader has reflected a little upon the meaning of this proposition, he will see, I think, that it is necessarily true, if the principles of human nature have been correctly represented in previous pages. Imagine that there is one trading body possessing only corn, and another possessing only beef. It is certain that, under these circumstances, a portion of the corn may be given in exchange for a portion of the beef, with a considerable increase of utility. How are we to determine at what point the exchange will cease to be beneficial? This question must involve both the ratio of exchange and the degrees of utility. Suppose for a moment that the ratio of exchange is approximately that of 10 pounds of corn for one pound of beef. Then if to the trading body which possesses corn, 10 pounds of corn are less useful than one of beef and that body will desire to carry the exchange further. Should the other body possessing beef find one pound less useful than 10 pounds of corn, this body will also be desirous to continue the exchange. Exchange will thus go on until each party has obtained all the benefit that is possible and loss of utility would result if more were exchanged. Both parties then rest in satisfaction and equilibrium and the degrees of utility have come to their level as it were. This point of equilibrium will be known by the criterion that an infinitely small amount of commodity exchange in addition at the same rate will bring neither gain nor loss of utility. In other words, if increments of commodities be exchanged at the established ratio, their utilities will be equal for both parties. Thus, if 10 pounds of corn were of exactly the same utility as one pound of beef, there would be neither harm nor good in future exchange at this ratio. It is hardly possible to represent this theory completely by means of a diagram, but the accompanying figure may, perhaps, render it clearer. Suppose a line PQR to be a small portion of the curve of utility of one commodity, while the broken line P1QR1 is the like curve of another commodity, which has been reversed and superposed on the other. Owing to this reversal, the quantities of the first commodity are measured along the base line from A towards B, whereas those of the second must be measured in opposite direction. Let units of both commodities be represented by equal lengths. Then a little line A1A indicates that an increase in the first commodity and a decrease in the second. Assume the ratio of exchange to be that of unit for unit, or one to one. Then by receiving the commodity A1A, the person will gain the utility AD and lose the utility A1C, or he will make a net gain of the utility corresponding to the mixed linear figure CD. He will therefore wish to extend the exchange if he were to go up to the point B1 and were still proceeding, he would by the next small exchange receive the utility BE and part with B1F, or he would have net loss of EF. He would therefore have gone too far, and it is pretty obvious that the point of intersection Q defines the place where he would stop with the greatest advantage. It is there that a net gain is converted into a net loss, or rather, where an infinitely small quantity, there is neither gain nor loss. To represent an infinitely small quantity, or even an exceedingly small quantity, on a diagram is, of course, impossible, but on either side of the line MQ, I have represented the utilities of a small quantity of commodity, more or less, and it is apparent that the net gain or loss upon the exchange of these quantities would be trifling.